in the tumultuous theater of World War II. A man known as God defined his name with unparalleled bravery. Mastering the art of escape, he eluded the clutches of seven German prison camps. But his failure went beyond personal freedom. Voluntarily incarcerated time and again, he spied on Nazis, bribed guards for intelligence, smuggled sustenance to Jewish prisoners, and even spent a night in Auschwitz. His audacity estimated to have saved 400 lives. Carr's name may suggest timidity, but his story unfolds as a testament to daring resilience against the backdrop of what I am tyranny. Embark on an extraordinary journey through the annals of wartime courage as we unveil the saga of Charles Joseph Coward. This video encapsulates the indomitable spirit of a soldier who despite his name epitomized bravery. Join us to witness his unparalleled escapes from seven German prison camps. This is the story of brave soldier Charles Joseph Coward. Charles Joseph Coward was born on March 21, 1919 in Surrey, England into a family that instilled in him a sense of resilience and determination. His formative years were marked by a fascination with adventure and a thirst for the unknown qualities that would later define his wartime experiences. Coward joined the army in June 1924 and was captured in May 1940 near Calais while serving with the 8th Reserve Regimental Royal Artillery as BQMS Battery Quartermaster Sergeant. He managed to make two escape attempts before even reaching a prisoner of war camp, then made seven further escapes on one memorable occasion managing to be awarded the Iron Cross while posing as a wounded soldier in a German army field hospital. When in captivity, he was equally troublesome to his captors, arranging several acts of sabotage while out on work details. Finally, in December 1943, he was transferred to the Auschwitz III Mono Labour Camp. Situated only five miles from the better known extramunition camp of Auschwitz, Monowitz was under the direction of the industrial company G. Farden, who were building a Buna synthetic rubber and liquid fuel plant there. Thanks to his command of the German language, Coward was appointed Red Cross liaison officer for the 1,200 to 1,400 British prisoners. In this trusted rule, he was allowed to move fairly freely throughout the camp and often to surrounding towns. He witnessed the arrival of trainloads of Jews to the extermination camp. Coward and other British prisoners smuggled food and other items to the Jewish inmates. He also exchanged coded messages with the British authorities via letters to a fictitious Mr. William Orange, good for the war office. Giving military information, notes on the conditions of Poles and the other prisoners in the camps, as well as dates and numbers of the arrival of train loads of Jews. On one occasion, a note was smuggled to him from a Jewish British ship's doctor who was being held in Mankowitz. Coward determined to contact him directly, managed to swap clothes with an inmate on a work detail, and spent the night in the Jewish camp. Seeing at first hand the horrific conditions in which these were held, he failed to find the individual, later found to be Karl Sparber, see below. 
This experience formed the basis of his subsequent testimony in post-war legal proceedings. Determined to do something about it, Coward used Red Cross supplies, particularly chocolate, to buy from the SS guards the corpses of dead prisoners, including Belgian and French civilian forced laborers. He then gave the documents and clothes taken from the non-Jewish corpses to the Jewish escapees, who adopted these new identities and were then smuggled out of the camp altogether. Coward carried out this scheme on numerous occasions and is estimated to have saved at least 400 Jewish slave laborers. In December 1944, Coward was sent back to the main camp of Stalag 8B at Lambsdorff, now Lombinois, Poland, and in January 1945, the Poles were marched under court to Bavaria, where they were eventually liberated. After the war, Coward testified at the Nuremberg war crimes trials. Describing the conditions inside the Monowitz camp, the treatment of Allied Poles and Jewish prisoners, and the locations of the gas chambers. In 1953, Coward also appeared as a witness in the Oldham Suite when the former slave laborer Norbert Wilhelm Suite IG Fabian for his salary and the compensation for damages. In January 1955, Kamar joined the Old Comrades Lodge No. 4077 of Il Ali. He was the subject of This Is Ill Light in 1960, when he was surprised by Yemen Andrews at the BBC Television Theatre. Kamar's journey post-World War II saw him embrace a myriad of roles. From public speaking engagements that captivated audiences with tales of his daring escapes of collaborating on books detailing his experiences, he became a living chronicle of the war's human side. Coward's resilience was put to the test repeatedly as he found himself in various German prison camps over the course of the war. Each time he embraced the challenge, devising new and ingenious methods to outsmart his captors. His ability to adapt and improvise in the face of adversity became the staff of legend. Coward's legacy extended far beyond the pages of history books. His life became a source of inspiration for generations to come. His story was not just about escaping physical confines. It was a metaphor for the triumph of the human spirit over adversity. In the years following the war, Coward's commitment to preserving the memory of his fellow prisoners and the sacrifices of those who didn't make it resonated with many. He became an advocate for Pedro's rights tirelessly working to ensure that the stories of those who served and sometimes gave their lives were not forgotten. Behind the tales of his daring escapes and exploits, there was a human side to coward. His experiences had forged deep bonds with his fellow prisoners, creating a sense of camaraderie that transcended the confines of captivity. These bonds would last a lifetime, a testament to the shared struggle against a common enemy. As Charles Joseph Coward entered the twilight of his life, he reflected on the tumultuous journey that had defined him. The scars of war remained etched into both his body and soul. Yet he spoke not of bitterness or regret, but of the enduring human capacity for hope, courage, and resilience. In interviews and memoirs, 
God often stressed the importance of remembering the sacrifices made by countless individuals during the war. His voice became a bridge between the past and the present, a reminder that the freedoms enjoyed today were secured through the sacrifices of the generation that fought against tyranny. Charles Joseph Coward passed away on October 9, 1993, but his legacy endures. His life was a testament to the triumph of the human spirit, a beacon of hope in the darkest days of war. His story went with threats of courage, determination, and the enduring will to be free stands as a reminder that even in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds, the human spirit can soar to unimaginable heights. Charles Joseph Kurt, the master of escape, will forever be remembered not only for his audacious fears during World War II, but also for the way he carried the torch of remembrance, ensuring that the sacrifices of his generation would echo through the corridors of time.